Hello again, quarantographers. I've noticed a lot of my friends have been cooking a lot, and that is wonderful. But I've also noticed that a lot of your photos suck. Google Martha Stewart bad food pictures. This is gonna be a quick, it's not gonna be quick. I'm gonna try and make this a quick tutorial on some basic food photography tips. <laughs> Elegant. So back in 2014, I want to say, I had a friend who worked for and he reached out to see if I could shoot a food review for him. I know, it's nepotism, it's garbage. I had never done so before, but I decided to say yes. He said, do you have a portfolio you could show me? And I said, be right back. So I reached out to a lovely restaurant called Grindhouse, rest in peace. I said, do you need any free food photography done? And thankfully the owner said yes. And uh, I looked around the internet and I found this one weird trick. And it really is one of those situations where there is this one weird trick in food photography that will get you 90% of the way there most of the time. And it really is as simple as this. Put your light behind the food. Here's your camera, here's your food, here's your light. It really could be the end of the video, but of course I'm gonna give you some demonstrations. It's not 100% of the time that this is true. There are a couple situations, especially with top downs, it's more of a 90 degree light. In pretty much any angle of light works top downs, that's why they're so popular. But it has something to do with the texture component of food. You want your food to look textural and tasty and toothsome. Having your light at this oblique angle really highlights that texture. But yeah, no matter what the style of your light, whether it be a like hard sunlight inspired look or a softer, more sumptuous look, putting your key light behind your food, your fill can be in front, putting your key behind the food will help it glisten and and will help bring out the texture in the food. There are certain situations where a little bit too much texture is a problem, say greasy things like pizza or whatever, but for the most part, some angle of behind, 90 degrees or further back, is usually your go-to angle for food. I think a lot of it also has to do with the angle at which you shoot food versus people. And with people, you wanna shoot them with the light generally in front of their face because this is the plane that matters. But if you're shooting food, it's usually this plane. So you have to kind of reorient the, the light in your head from uh, straight on from the camera to actually kind of more towards the food's face, which is actually from behind. It's almost as if you're shooting a person lying down. It would be the same idea. If you have your light here to shoot a person standing up and they lie down, suddenly the best angle is back there. So think about it that way. There are also styling elements to consider. Make sure your food looks good to begin with. If you're making your own food and shooting it, then really just try and make sure your food looks good to begin with. And you won't have to get into the more complicated areas of food styling. That is a whole video series done by somebody other than me. I am not that kind of expert. But these tips will get you pretty far when your subject looks good already. Another thing I'm going to be working on a little bit is composition Additionally, adding elements other than your food to keep it from looking too medical and single. I like putting a few elements that go out of frame, diagonally especially, that kind of hem in the viewer's eye towards your main subject. Another thing to think about, we're going to be shooting bread and toppings to bread, which are all very kind of flat, top-down friendly foods. If you're shooting something like a tall cake or a stacked burger or a drink, there may be some modifications to this formula. You may need to kind of adjust where your light is and bring it a little closer to on axis or more, maybe 90 degrees or something like that. But the fact remains, you, you don't really want to go too frontal. And I'll take a few shots to kind of exemplify that, just so you can see the difference. But yeah, those are, those are the only things I really want you to think about today. Light behind and uh, compositional elements. I've made some bread. I'm sure a lot of you have been doing the same. I cannot find flour at any store. I was doing this before the quarantine. Get your own damn hobby. Usually my videos are a little bit more exploratory in nature, but really this time I just want to show you this one weird trick. I hate that phrase. So we're starting with a very simple setup, just window light. And I'm starting over the behind me, the way that I don't recommend. And you can see it's a nice looking loaf, you know, it's not a bad picture. It's just a little less dynamic than it could be, as you'll see as I stand up and come to the other side. 
Now I'm shooting it short lit as I recommend. The shadow's a little deep for my taste. You're actually losing a bit, but you can see how it's already getting a little bit more dynamic. Now as I bring in a white fill, I think that's a massive improvement. It's glistening, it's textural. When you come down from a lower angle, it glistens even more. It shines even more from a lower angle. So now I'm gonna bring out some lights. This was my go-to travel kit for a long time. Started with killing the ambient, building from fill, starting by just getting the fill where I want it to be. Now I've got a key coming in that's too dim. Worth noting the key has been gelled at about a quarter CTO. And as you can see already, it's a pretty similar light to the window light. And I'm gonna do the experiment from this side as well. Once again, it's not a bad picture, but you know, it's just not as good as the other direction. Top down, as you can see, looks pretty good. And you know, from a top down perspective, that light's at a 90 degree angle. This is a different kind of short lit. I'm a little bit more from the left. As you can see, I'm actually blocking all fill light, but I rather like that angle. Now I'm just bringing in a couple compositional elements. This isn't necessarily my best prop styling job, but you can see how just having these other elements can kind of hem in the subject. I'm gonna do some more serious styling in the next part of this video. This is just a quick little experiment. So here I've cut up the bread, I've brought out some nice flaky sea salt, brought the knife onto the cutting board, and I think we have a much more dynamic composition here. And as you can see, I'm using that knife to kind of just chop off the corner of the image. It's just a leading line, and I find it's a nice little trick to bring in the viewer's vision. Something I'd improve here, the interior of the larger part of the bread is not catching the light. That's why I'm changing direction here. You can just turn the bread to try and catch more light. The top down's nice again. So here now the light's actually almost more like a you know, 60 degree angle from me. It's, it's still from the back, but it's not, you know, straight back. And this seems to be about the right angle for this light. It's really nice. The large part of the loaf is actually casting a shadow on the slices. I like that the salt's in the background now. It's better there than in the foreground. I realize I should be cropping this. Firing too quickly so my flashes aren't keeping up sometimes. That's a nice simple shot. I think I thought the salt was a little bit too bright, so I'm gonna swap it here for some oil and vinegar. I think that's a little bit more balanced. And just for good measure, I've got Emma in here to uh, be a nice hand model for me. It was not hard to convince her to have some bread. We're gonna move to the next look. Here you can see I've gotten a little bit more advanced. I've made some avocado toast out of this bread. I've fried up some eggs. And already straight out of the gate, I'm pretty happy with this shot. You see the diagonal of the knife, the nice texture from the placemat. I've got a lot of colors going on here, which is really nice. You gotta be careful not to let too much of one color. You don't want just like brown rice and bread and poached chicken. Every little bit of color you can add to your food is very helpful. There are whole diets based around this concept. You can see I've got the fill off just to my left and the key is pretty much right behind the food. It's off in the upper right corner of this frame. And I'm just playing around with different compositions here. Still not sure about that Mandarin. It feels a little non sequitur but the color's nice. But I'm doubling down on the Mandarin. Another element in the corner here, once again, just kind of guides the eye a little bit. An empty corner would have been a little bit blah, but this adds a little bit more dynamism to the composition. Do a nice little drizzle of hot sauce. It's nice to get the basic version of your image before you do something that might ruin it, like add a sauce, just in case. In this case, I thought it turned out nicely. Yeah, food stylist would have done a better job, but not bad. Feel pretty good about this shot. A couple other things to show you here. If I go a little too low and the light grazes off of this egg, it can look a little too shiny. This is what I was talking about earlier. So you do have to be careful about light placement. If things are just a little too shiny, just adjust your position a little bit and you might find that the light just catches differently. It's not so bad. Too shiny. He said I brought in a beer. Any excuse to drink in the afternoon. Another... I put the beer in the lower right hand corner. Once again, just another dynamic element to kind of hem in the composition. 
So now I'm gonna try, I'm gonna bring in the key light to a more 90 degree angle. I don't think it's gonna be quite as effective as it was at the more 180 degree. It's like a brighter scene. It's still fine, it's still nice, but I don't feel like it's got that lovely mood that the other version had. It's really a matter of taste in the end. And then one last thing, I'm gonna put the key light right behind me in a position that would be good for portraits, but look here, it just looks a little off. It's fine, once again, it's just not nearly as dynamic. I'm taking it out of the umbrella and we're gonna try a couple more interesting ideas. Here's, a, I'm holding it directly above camera. We're gonna go full Martha Stewart on this. It's a look and you can, and I have done this, if you know, you know why it's wrong and you can make it your wrong, absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's super fun. There's something very playfully wrong, but you really need to know how to do it right before you can experiment too much in this way. So that's my food lighting tutorial. I hope this has been helpful. I'd love to see you guys shooting your own food. I'd love to see what you guys are eating uh, in quarantine. I know people have really let their inner chefs shine. So let's see those photos. If you're a subscriber to our Patreon, you can share them in our Discord, and I'll offer my advice to improve or otherwise comment on your images. I'm really here for the community. Let me be your choir partner. If you learned something from this video, like, subscribe, share, and until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay shooting. Thank you so much.